Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt. And today we are going to be putting uh, beer taps on our drywall. Uh, so I recently built a keyser, uh, so like a freezer converted into a kegerator. If you haven't seen that, uh, check out the description below. I'll have a link to the keyser build, which is very simple. But the idea here is to take the keyser taps and put them right on this wall here. Um, so we're gonna have three taps on this wall. The keyser build only had two, but I since then have added a third tap. So we're going to plan out how we're gonna put this uh, into place and stay tuned as you'll see how to do this yourself. I've never done this before. I'm kind of doing this on the fly and I don't really see a whole lot of videos online talking about this. So hopefully this will be a good reference for anyone looking at doing this themselves. Anyway guys, if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well if you're interested in this type of content and we're gonna jump right into it. So the first thing I wanna do is figure out how high I want the tap handles. Um, I have my uh, tap handles here and I looked online, there wasn't really a standard as far as how high tap handles should be from the bottom, from the floor to uh, where you should be holding the handle. But uh, I, I kind of eyeballed it what I thought was comfortable. So I kind of put it up against the wall and acted like I was tilting it and I came out to around 50 inches from the floor to where uh, the tap will be coming out of the wall. So I went ahead and found the center of the wall here. So this is 50 inches um, from the floor and then I also me measured the width of the wall and I measured the center point. So the center point for the wall is right here. The next thing we're, we're gonna wanna do is go behind the wall and see if we can make this work with the studs. So now we're behind the wall and this, uh, the basement was built primarily with these metal studs here. And I found the center point where I marked on the other side of the wall. Um, you can also do this pretty easily by just putting like a very small nail through the wall and then you'll see exactly where the center point is on the other side. Uh, but I kind of measured it out. The center point's about right here. Um, this is a little too close to this stud. So, and I don't really want to put a, a tap on the other side of the stud because that is going to complicate things when we're uh, wrapping all of this insulation so it will stay cold. Um, so what we're going to do is we're probably going to shift the keys or, or the taps over probably another inch or two. And just, to, just so we can make sure that all the taps are fitting in between one section of studs. Also, while planning this, you want to make sure you get a drip tray. This drip tray I bought, which is uh, fairly large, I want to say it's around 16 inches uh, wide. And what I did is I found the center point and then I marked, um, I broke this up into four sections. Um, so this will be for three taps, like I said. So I pretty much marked uh, where it's about four inches for each section. And then I marked where the tap should be directly above the, uh, above the, uh, the actual drip tray. So you want to also use this in consideration when planning uh, where they need to be and where the studs are behind the wall. So we roughed in where the taps will be on the other side of the wall where, and we're keeping into consideration to keep it in between the studs so it's a little easier to insulate. Um, so tap one is there, tap two is here, and tap three is here. And obviously these are rough sketches. They aren't exactly where they're going to be um, when we drill in the holes. Um, the one thing you want to take into consideration too is the the, uh, the shank uh, diameter um, is only going to be like seven eighths, and at least that's what mine is. But you want to also take into consideration the screw that goes on the other side of the shank um, to tighten the shank against the wall. And so it's actually a total of uh, an inch and a half. So I have an inch and a half of clearance here, and then I don't know if you can see, but I left about maybe, you know, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. Uh, so it will be a little bit more comfortable to work with that, tightening that, that uh, shank against the wall. But yeah, I tried to put it as close as I could so it would stay as centered as I could, but it's gonna be about an inch or inch or inch and a half off the center. After you have the location for the tap handles, you wanna poke a hole through the drywall so you can see the holes on the other side of the drywall. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to add some wood behind this drywall so it can support the taps a little better and also the uh, drip tray. So for the wood, you can really use anything. I'm using some just scrap wood I found in my garage, some one by six. So I'm just gonna put these two uh, one by sixes and glue them on the drywall. You could use plywood, you could use two by four, you could use really whatever you have on hand. Um, you just want something that the, uh, the shanks can tighten up against and the uh, drip tray to tighten up against. That's not just drywall. Drywall is kind of flimsy. So you want something to hold onto the, the shanks and the, uh, the drip tray. So I went ahead and applied a liberal amount of construction adhesive to both sides of the 1x6 and applied that 1x6 to the drywall. 
Um, I kind of wiggled it back and forth down all the way down the drive, the, uh, the one by six to make sure the glue was uh, properly applied to the drywall. And I'm kind of holding it in place with this uh, like little step ladder um, just to let this dry. It's gonna take 24 hours for this to cure, um, but you're more than welcome to start drilling into it as long as someone's holding it on the other side if you wanna start putting up the shanks now. Once the wood on the other side of the drywall is dry, uh, you can go ahead and start drilling your holes for the shanks. Uh, my shank size is 7 8 inch, uh, and I have these holes punched through the wall so I know exactly where to drill uh, from when we put the small nails through the drywall on the other side. Um, this can get pretty messy though too, so just uh, put something down. I just have some insulation down just to catch a lot of the debris. Uh, but yeah, that's the first hole, and we're going to make three more holes here. Okay, and here are the three holes I have. Um, I had a spare shank for the third tap that's currently not installed in the geezer, so I just pushed that through to make sure it fit. And it's a snug fit. Uh, you want a snug fit. You don't want this wiggling around too much. You want the shank to be pretty stable, and then you want to tighten it um, on the other side with the wall behind the drywall. So I went ahead and tightened the shanks against the wall here um, and added the tap handles. Um, one thing you might notice is that there's actually an adapter on two of these taps right here and right here. Um, this one uh, I thought was the same tap panel, but it's actually a little bit different. The reason why, or the reason what these adapters do actually is you'll get a better view on, on this side, but they pretty much make it so um, the taps don't hit against the wall. You'll see how close they are against the wall. Um, without this adapter, these taps wouldn't actually be closed, be able to be closed, but you can buy if you need uh, if, if you run into this situation at home where the tap handle see how far that's leaning back um, you can buy these adapters online i'll put a link in the description below um, where you can pick up these little adapters i want to say that these are just five dollars each or five to seven dollars each so they're really very very cheap but yeah i just wanted to make a note of that just in case you had the same issue because i had to do some research to figure out a solution for myself here the next thing we want to do is we want to put the drip tray on the wall um, how I did it is I found the center point of the um, of the center tap, kind of drew a line down, um, and I used a level and a square tool to make sure that that was straight as I could get it. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want, I, what I do is I typically measure nine inches from the bottom of the tap. I find that that's a pretty good distance for most pint glasses. And then you want to just put the drip tray on the wall, use a level, Find the center point of the drip tray. You can see that little line there. Match that center line with the drip tray with the line you drew on the wall. And then use a level to level out the actual drip tray and then mark the holes with a pencil. So I already did that. So you can see there's a little loop there and a little loop there. Now, both of these are going straight into drywall, not wood. Um, so I'm gonna use pretty nice anchors and for another safety um, feature to make sure that this is pretty solid on the wall. If you remember, the one by six is directly behind this wall here. We're just missing it with these two screws. Um, I'm gonna add like a little tiny block of wood to support underneath the drip tray. You shouldn't be able to see it since it's gonna be pretty thin, but it will just, just uh, help support the drip tray's weight. And also that will go directly into the wood. And this is with the drip tray installed on the wall. I use these black screws, screw it into the drywall anchors, and you can do a final test to make sure if it's level with a small little level like this. Um, I didn't actually use a block of wood. Uh, I found that that was a little too large and awkward looking. I did find these little uh, brackets. So I kind of put one bracket and this is screwed directly into the uh, one by six behind the wall. Additionally, with the, uh, the setup, I added a uh, Amazon Fire tablet. It's like a 10 inch tablet. That's gonna be a dedicated what's on tap, tap list IO um, screen for my tap list. And I will go, I'm gonna make an entire video on this tablet setup for the next upload um, to go into a lot more detail on this setup here. But in short, uh, it's pretty much a 3D printed uh, casing that holds a Amazon Fire tablet running tapless IO free version. And then it's just uh, it's just screwed onto the wall with some cable management. But uh, you can stay tuned on my channel and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make a video just on this tapless IO um, setup and configuration. Okay, so we went ahead and moved the freezer to its final destination. 
Um, and that's just against this back wall with the tabs pointing towards the shanks that we installed and the holes that we drilled. Um, so here's where we can get a little creative. And obviously this is gonna depend largely on how long the run is from your freezer to the taps. If the run from your freezer to your taps is less than six feet, and mine is definitely less than six feet, I wanna say mine's probably a foot and a half to two feet tops, um, you do not have to worry about active cooling with these lines. Um, if the run is larger than six feet, so like let's say I took this freezer and I was running, I don't know, to the other side of this room or something, then I would have to worry about active uh, uh, cooling on those lines. Now, if you opt to add active cooling, there is really one of two ways you can do this. Most, uh, traditionally what most people do is they wrap the beer lines in some sort of foam insulation, uh, and then they'll run a glycol line inside that wrap. So you pretty much have a cold uh, tube in there that's always gonna be cold because it's constantly pumping cold glycol in the insulation wrap, keeping the other beer lines cold in the wrap. Um, so that's one way you can do it. You don't need a fancy glycol chiller to do this either. You can use, uh, you can just use water and add a lot of salt to it. You'd have to figure out how much salt you need to add so it doesn't freeze. But you essentially just put a bucket of salt water in your freezer. You get a submersible pump and then you attach a beer line to that submersible pump to pump the salt water through the line, just like you would a glycol chiller. If you have a glycol chiller already, well then good for you, you can just do that as well. But like I said, you do not need to do a uh, at, use active cooling on a line that's less than six feet. Another option you have, if you don't wanna use a submersible pump or pump any salt water or glycol with the lines, is you can just build like a PVC wind tunnel uh, so you can just build, uh, get some PVC tubing, like two inch or three inch PVC uh, tubing, and uh, just attach uh, the PVC to the uh, wooden collar of the freezer and pretty much encompass the entire line and then just get a fan and blow cold air in the PVC tube. Uh, that's another way to keep the beer lines cold. Uh, but we're gonna opt to just run the beer lines just with insulation, no glycol, no salt water, and no PVC tube, no wind. Uh, since the beer line is less than six feet. You might be asking yourself, well, what should I be using to wrap these and what tubing should I use? And there's um, obviously a lot of options you can use. The stuff I'm gonna be using is, I'm gonna be using HVAC tape. And then this stuff right here is copper pipe insulation. Um, so you can buy these at like Home Depot or whatever. They're kind of bendy, which is nice. And it's wide enough diameter where I can run three lines in it. So what I'm essentially gonna do is I'm gonna take my three beer lines, I'm gonna wrap them tightly with HVAC tape. I'm then gonna put them in this tubing. And the nice thing about this tubing as well um, is, is it has a slit in it. So it's really easy to work with. You can just push the lines right through and the slit runs all the way down the length of the pipe. Um, so you're gonna wrap it with HVAC tape, nice and tight. You're gonna put that now HVAC uh, three lines in this tubing. And then I'm gonna wrap this tubing again in HVAC tape. In the outer uh, collar, I drilled a large hole. Um, I actually used one of these uh, drill attachments. These are used to drill like door handles. Um, but I put a large hole in the collar and I'm gonna actually run the insulation right into this hole. So the insulation is gonna come down and then poke through right inside. That way um, you get a really nice tight fit from where the tubing goes from inside the kegerator to outside the kegerator. So I first wrapped the trunk in the HVAC tape and I went pretty far down. The next I'm gonna do is wrap it in the uh, copper insulation and then I'm gonna wrap the copper insulation in more HVAC tape. This is the final wrap I did. So I wrapped it in the uh, copper tubing insulation and then I wrapped that in HVAC tape. So there's pretty much two layers of HVAC tape with a layer of copper pipe insulation. We also put up some metal shelving I bought from Amazon. Um, this shelving really isn't for glassware. It's just, it's just metal shelving. Um, I did add, if you can't already tell, I added like two strips of black electrical tape and this is just to cause a little bit extra grip. I noticed that the glassware might kind of slide around a little bit, uh, which made me a little nervous. 
Uh, so we added a few strips of black tape to it, which really is helping hold it into place. Yeah, but that really about concludes the build. Uh, we have the three tap handles here, a drip tray. We have a tablet here. So what's on tap and I got some stats there. And I also added some shelving or some glassware. But yeah, that about concludes the video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, make sure if you haven't already to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. There'll be more uh, informational videos and grain to glass videos coming on the YouTube channel this year. But anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.